Hi everyone, this will be your video for transformations of quadratics and um, all functions actually, so here we go. So on this page you can see all of our different types of transformations. These should be pretty familiar to what you've learned in geometry. The words mean the same thing, but now we're just applying them to graphs. So up first you can see that we have a reflection, and that's basically as if you had a mirror on your graph. And there's two ways that we can reflect. You can either reflect over the x-axis or over the y. We also have translations, which is also sometimes referred to as a slide. And you can either translate or slide up and down, which is vertical, or left and right, which is horizontal. We also have what's called a dilation, and that's basically making the shape either smaller or larger. And you can have that as a vertical stretch, where everything's getting pulled vertically, or vertical compression, where everything's getting squeezed down. Okay, so up first you can see that we have a reflection over the x-axis. So that means that if I were to look at my x-axis, that's basically kind of where my mirror would be, okay? The red function here, this is our original. This is what's called a parent function. So it's just the x squared, it's just a good old fashioned parabola. Now if you notice down here in our blue function, you can see how there's a negative sign in front of the whole function. So when it's a negative in front of the whole function, that's what's letting you know that the whole thing is getting flipped over. So that's kind of what you're looking for there. So this is gonna be flipped over the x axis most specifically. Okay, let's look at a different reflection. So now we have a y-axis reflection. So these functions are a little bit more complicated, but it's the same idea where you have a quadratic function and you know that because your x value is squared. Now our first one up here, you can see that our x on the inside right here is positive, And you can see that our red parabola is our original. So the red one's over here. Now this does look like it shifted, but it's actually reflected over the y-axis. So in this case, our y-axis is our little mirror point. And you can see that it was flipped over, kind of like a revolving door around the y-axis. And the reason that we know that from looking at an equation is the negative sign on the inside. So this is telling us it's gonna be flipped over the y-axis. Okay, next up are translations. So a vertical translation, that's just taking your whole graph and moving them up or down. So again, we have our red parabola, which is our original, it's the parent function here. Now you can see in our blue parabola, we have a plus one, and that plus one is just hanging on to the end of the function there. It's not on the inside of the square, it's just by itself. So that's telling me I'm taking that parabola and I'm going to be moving it up one, so you can see I took my red parabola and I moved it up. Now as far as the green parabola down here, you can see now I have a minus one. Okay, so that minus sign is telling me, okay, I took my parabola and I moved it down one. Okay, so next up we have a horizontal translation. You can see again, our red function is our parent function. It's just exactly where it needs to be. Now our blue function, you can see that we have a plus three on the inside. So horizontal translations do get a little bit tricky. Always go opposite of your intuition. So think opposite here. Okay, so we see that it says a plus three on the inside. That's actually telling us that it's going to be to the left, left three units. So I took my original parabola and I moved it to the left three units. And that's because I saw that plus three on the inside. Now if we look down at our green parabola, we see a minus three, so that's telling us that it's going to be to the right. Okay, so again, fighting your intuition here. So our minus three means that our whole parabola got moved to the right three units. Okay, and our last transformation is what's called a dilation, and more specifically, it's called a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. So again, our red parabola is our original, it's our parent function, and you can see that we have some changes to our blue and green. So the blue parabola here has a three in the front, okay? So it's being multiplied to the whole function. Now if you look at your blue parabola, it's more narrow, and it's almost like somebody's pulling it, so it's like pulled vertically, all right? So it's going to get taller, it's going to get skinnier, it's gonna get narrower. 
And that's all because this A value is greater than one, okay? So it's a number greater than one. Now, if we look down at our green parabola, we do have a different number multiplied in the front, and this one's a fraction, it's one fourth. If we look at our green parabola, it's wider, and it's almost as if somebody's compressing it or pushing it down. All right, and that's because this value here is between zero and one. So zero is less than a, which is less than one, meaning it's going to be a fraction or a decimal that's between zero and one. So you can see that they're both being multiplied, but depending on the value, it's either going to stretch your function, like the blue parabola right here, or it's going to compress it like the green one, which ends up getting wider and flatter. Okay, so again, that greater than one, that's going to cause a stretch. And the less than one is going to cause a compression or compress. All right. All right, so finally, if you have not taken a single note this whole video, pause the screen right now and write all of this down because this is everything compiled into one slide or one little cheat sheet for you. So we do have, um, you know, this is vertex form. And we've learned vertex form because that makes it easiest to understand the transformations. So when it's in vertex form, sometimes you have this value in the front. And we've already discussed what this value does. We know that if it's a number bigger than one, it's a stretch. We know that if it's a fraction or a decimal, it's gonna be compressed. And we know if it's negative, it's going to flip our whole function over. When we're looking at our h, this was the one where we had to think opposite. This one was tricky. So looking at the h, it's going to tell you if it's going to be moving left or right, but knowing which direction is always the hardest part. So if you see like a plus three or plus any number, then that's going to tell you to move to the left. You have to think opposites here. If you see a minus number, then you know you're going to be moving to the right. It's opposites. I know it's weird. Trust me. I know, but it's gonna be exactly what you need. So think opposites. Okay, and then lastly, we do have that K. And so when I was talking about K earlier, I was saying how it's just kind of on the end of the function. It's not on the inside of what's being squared. It's not being multiplied to what's being squared. It's just kind of added on, it's an afterthought. This is as straightforward as it comes, okay? So if you see a plus a number, that means that you're moving up. If you see a minus a number, that means that you are moving down.